Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today I've got a couple of tools that were sent in from CMI Zapper to show to you. Um, so I've got their two Chipmunk USB testers. Um, I've got a uh, BIOS chip breakout board and also their known good battery MacBook battery test board here. Um, so I'm going to go over these one by one for you and show you what they're used for and how they can make diagnostics on Apple laptops much, much quicker if you're looking for very specific faults. Let's get into it. So let's start off by looking at the Chipmunk USB tester. So this guy is available in both USB-A flavors and also USB Type-C flavors. Um, and they both do the same thing, except just one of them's got a Type-A and one of them's got a Type-C port. So if you're working on modern MacBooks, which are Type-C only, this guy's going to be an awful lot more useful to you. However, you could also use the Type-A one with an adapter on it. So what this guy is, as you can see, it's a, it's a USB dongle. It's got a little ground point on the end, so you can anchor, for example, an earth, um, an earth probe to it that's plugged into your multimeter. So as soon as you plug this into the laptop, you just immediately have a ground connection to the laptop for buzzing out points on the, on the motherboard, for example. And so when you plug this in, it's got a couple of LEDs that are going to light up. So what we see here is we've got... Uh, this red power LED at the bottom there and that guy is going to come on as soon as it's got I think at least two and a half volts it comes on at which just indicates that the board has some power to it and then the 5 volt LED that guy is going to come on if we've got the proper USB 5 volts and that is in spec as well so that indicates that we've got a stable power connection power level coming out of the USB port so this immediately tells us a lot about the power state of the laptop because firstly, it's essentially a functional power LED. And a lot of laptops these days don't actually have a power LED. And especially if you're working on a bare motherboard, you may not have any indicator LEDs to you. So this can be the clearest and simplest way of knowing if the board is actually on or not. Uh, because otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell. A lot of stuff these days, the um, the cooling fan may not switch on when you turn on the laptop, even just to test. So sometimes it can actually be genuinely hard to know if the board has powered on or not. So uh, immediately with one of these guys plugged in, you can see that the board has turned on. And then finally, that USB LED in the middle that's flashing green now and then, that's going to flash every time it detects um, USB uh, traffic or whenever it detects activity on the USB bus the usb bus bus and that is useful because your usb controller is on the pch which on most modern laptops is integrated into the cpu so if your usb port is active and is showing activity by blinking this light when you plug this into the laptop that immediately tells you that the cpu is powered on and running and again, this is a very clear indicator that there is that the board is not brain dead. It tells you immediately that you have something that is kind of sort of working. Whereas if you plug this into a laptop and you're getting no flashing on the USB port at all, then that probably means your PCH is dead. Or at the very least, it should set alarm bells ringing that you might have a bad PCH. And obviously, if you've got a bad PCH, you probably have a dead laptop that's not worth saving, uh, unless you're going to be a hero and replace a PCH or a CPU. So that's what this guy does, um, and it's a very simple device. But by giving you this small amount of information, in the two seconds it takes to plug this guy in, we can immediately ascertain that the laptop is on and the CPU is running. And that is an awful lot of information that you would have to probe in very specific places with a multimeter to otherwise discover. Of course, this all assumes that the laptop doesn't already power on. However, when you're working with a bare motherboard, it's a lot of information. And the, this thing is made with a lot of handy care. As I mentioned, we've got these handy little um, uh, ground points on the end, which are a nice bit of utility. And in addition to that, it's reversible as well. If I turn it over, it has the same three LEDs uh, that are set to fire backwards through the board. So 
as you can see, we've got a set on the top and a set that shine through. So whatever way up the board is, you can still see the LEDs. And this is also extremely useful because anyone who's working on a bare motherboard is probably turning the board over to get access to both sides at any given time. So again, just really nice attention to detail. These things are designed by someone who knows board repair. And that is a big deal because a lot of the time, a lot of repair tools are not necessarily built by someone who uses them day to day. So uh, that is the chipmunk. And just for argument's sake, I'll just grab a laptop and we can just show you the Type-C one in action. So I've got a MacBook 2015 here and I'll just plug this guy into the side. And the MacBook 2015 is a classic example because when I open the laptop, it's supposed to turn on on its own. However, um, on a modern Mac, there's no power LED and the screen will, if it's, the screen is black, you genuinely, it's genuinely very difficult to tell if the device is on or not. So just straight away, I know that the device is off because the LEDs aren't on. And if I press the power button, we've got a chime. However, before the screen has even lit up, I can immediately see that we have power and we had a flash from it. So I know the CPU has powered up and is working. And likewise, as soon as I close the lid, we also have a very clear indicator as to if the laptop is still on or not. So we can see that it's still powered up. And again, from any way up, we can use the shine through LEDs. We can see that it's still on, it's still doing stuff. And then when those LEDs go out, I know that the board has actually powered off. And there we go. Now I know that the laptop has actually turned off. So these USB chipmunks, definitely a really, really handy tool for any repair guy's toolkit, just to be able to plug them into any device that's sitting in front of you and immediately get critical information for a laptop that is not giving you any output to its display at all. Because if you've got no output to the display, some of this information that might seem extremely obvious can suddenly become very, very difficult to determine. So really, really handy. So. Next, we're going to take a look at this guy. So this is the CMI Zappa ROM chip solder board, A4595. And this guy is very, very simple. It's just a breakout board for multiple ROM chips for all kinds of different laptops. Uh, as with most of the CMI Zappa tools, it's designed for Macs, but you can use this for all kinds of things. And this does the same thing as a lot of the SMD adapters that I have used before. So here are a couple of examples of the cheap eBay ones that I use. So when you remove a, um, uh, a ROM chip from a board, it's going to be a little surface mount jobby that you can't exactly just drop into the chip socket of your programmer. Um, so you need one of these adapter boards. And usually, you, like you can see I've got here, you would have a couple of them lying about. And for the laptops that I work on, uh, I've, got the, um, I've got the old style one and the modern SMD one. So uh, that one is the SOP16 um, or SOP8 adapter. And this one is the WSON adapter. Um, and that covers most of the laptops that I use. However, if you do all Apple laptops, there are actually a multitude of other footprints that you might encounter as well. And so the, uh, the, the ROM solder board, the ROM chip solder board has all of them on it. So as you can see here, um, we've got a whole, li a whole row of footprints across here. And uh, I'll list these out. Uh, they're available to view on the website. Uh, but we've got the, uh, the the BGA chip, which is used for the MacBook A1534. It's a tiny little one there. Um, we've got the, uh, the little WSON 2x3, and this is used for Thunderbolt and T2 chips. Uh, then we've got the, the WSON 5x6, which is the sort of standard ROM chip size for WSON. Uh, then we've got the SOP8 and SOP16 footprints up there for the older chips. And there's a couple of other boys on here as well. Uh, we've got the WSON 3x4 there. Not sure what that one is used for. But the point is, all of the common footprints that you will encounter are all here on this single board. And it's a nice, thick, heavy board as well, uh, which is nice because that means you get nice, decent solder connections. These cheap adapters tend to be made on 
very cheap boards and I'm terrified of lifting um, uh, lifting pins on these things. Every time I solder to this, all of my um, all of these pins, the solder for those reflows, so it all goes a bit manky and horrid and blah blah blah. And there's a couple of other nice things as well here. This footprint here is for connecting up. You could add a JST plug to connect the CMI Zapper Medusa, which is another breakout device they have, which I don't have to show off for you today. Um, but again, that can be integrated into a lot of the CMI Zapper products. And then we've got a couple of jumpers over here that you can put on pull-up resistors um, for things like uh, up the hold function or write protect function and things like that. So if you're doing very specific things, you could stick a pull-up resistor on the write protect and that ensures that no matter what you do with your programmer, you cannot overwrite the chip, which is very good if you need to be very, very careful with the chip that you're trying to look at. So really nice little extras there. Uh, like with the chipmunk, it's got a, a little hole up here, so that can be to be used as a ground point or just simply as, as it's billed as, it's just simply a hook. So you can hang it on a nail on the wall, you can put it on a keychain, you can do all kinds of other things just to keep it to one side. And this kind of thing is really handy just because whenever you've got a lot of tools like this around your workshop, it's very difficult to actually keep track of where you left them all. And uh, personally, in my opinion, there's a lot of mileage in just hanging stuff on the wall, which is why every single one of my USB adapters, and as soon as I'm finished with these, um, I will do the same with these, has a lanyard on it. I put a lanyard on everything like this and it gets hung on the wall. So you cannot possibly lose it or leave it in the back of someone's computer or anything like that and not realize. Um, so the other thing you'll notice is we've got these two connectors down here and here. So this is where we plug in um, our uh, DIN connectors. So where have I put the ones that came with this? Here they are. So you would put these in here and stick some solder on the top of those. Eh. And then that creates your 8-pin DIN connector uh, that can go into the programmer. Um, and the nice thing about this board, you'll notice we have two of them. Um, they are in opposing orientations. So depending on what program you have, you may find one or the other one is the correct orientation. So for me, if I'm using something like my RT809F, uh, I would be using this one here because when I turn it around and line it up, that is going to line up with the programmer and not foul the hold down lever. And the same thing goes if you're using a CH341A. The orientation would be like that in a CH341A. However, if you've got a different programmer where the lever is at the other end of the socket or it's just differently wired, you may find that that is fouling up the lever. So in which case you would use the other one so you can put it in the other way around like that. So whatever programmer you have, this has got one of these connectors that will be in the correct orientation. So again, really nice thoughtfulness there that means that they can put, it has both these connectors on, you can use whichever one is correct, and that means that it can be a nice big circuit board that's got lots of space to solder instead of having to use one of these poxy little things that won't stand up or keeps getting pushed away by the hot air or something like that. Extra shout out to Awesome 3D Prints who made this little enclosure box for my CH341A. It's super cool, isn't it? Now the last item I'm going to show you today is the battery port tester, also known as the known good battery. And this does exactly what it's called. It is a known good battery. It pretends to be a known good battery to the laptop. So this is available in a couple of different flavors depending on what laptop you want to test with it. So I've got the MacBook Air version here. So it's got a MacBook Air battery connector on it. And this is going to plug directly into this MacBook Air instead of the normal battery. And as you can see, it's got a, a host of different LEDs on it that tell us lots of different things. So I'll plug this in and we'll point out the LEDs and tell you what each of them tells you about. So let's just disconnect the battery here. I'll plug this guy in instead. Now, in its current state, nothing will happen because this device itself does not have a built-in battery. However, we can connect an 8-volt power supply to it so it has its own power source. So I'll show you that in just a moment. But for now, I'm just going to connect up a MagSafe charger just so we can get the lights to come on. So I'll plug in a MagSafe charger here. 
And as you can see, that's just gone from green light to orange light, and the laptop is trying to turn on. If we go over to this guy, you can see that the LEDs are starting to light up. So let's go down through these LEDs here. We've got a blue flashing LED here for SMC running, and that is exactly what it says it is. This tells us that the MacBook's SMC, the system management controller, is on and running. Now, we can determine this by measuring the voltage at PPBus G3 hot. However, again, the point of these devices is that they give you a lot of information at a very quick glance without having to take the measurements one by one. So keep that in mind as we go through this, because a lot of this information you'll say, well, I could tell that by measuring X, Y, Z. Yes, but you can't measure all of these things at the same time. So we've got an LED to tell us that the SMC is running. Then under that, we've got a two indicators here that tells us which ISL check we have in the laptop. So this tells us that we've got a 6259 in there. If we're plugging into an older MacBook Air, then it might have a 6258. So again, without even glancing at the logic board, we can immediately identify which version we have on the board. We've got the AC OK light here, and that tells us that the MacBook is sensing and recognizing that the charger is connected and is accepting power from the charger. So this tells us that the laptop is in a state of charge, per se. Likewise, these three LEDs up here also indicate that the laptop is attempting to charge. So this device will not uh, this device will appear to be a 50% charged battery at all times. Uh, but these LEDs indicate that the laptop thinks it is charging the battery. We've also got a couple of red LEDs here that will come on to indicate an error status. So um, the system present LED, this will come on if the system present connection is not made. Uh, MacBooks, MacBook batteries have a system present pin on them that must be pulled to ground through a pull-down resistor in order to tell the battery that it's connected to something. Otherwise, the battery will not output power. This is to prevent the connector from being short-circuited if it's not connected to something. So um, the resistor for this might go bad, in which case the laptop will not recognize any battery that's connected to it. So if that LED comes on, this tells you that the system present resistor is bad, and that will be why your, your laptop won't detect any batteries. Uh, likewise, we've got an error for the I squared C bus here. So this will come on if it's not communicating with the laptop. So that could indicate, again, an error with some of the other data lines through the battery connector. And then we also have a general error LED that comes on if there is a protocol error on the I squared C bus, because you might have an I squared C connection, but it might be in an error state, which again would prevent communication with the battery. We've also got another uh, LED over here for overvolt. So this guy will come on if the voltage coming to the battery exceeds the known battery ratings. So this might come on if there is a fault with, for example, the battery charge MOSFET and it's just dumping charger voltage into the battery. And that would be bad because that kills batteries and might even be an actual fire hazard as well. So this guy's going to come on and we've even got a, a buzzer here that will sound in under gross overvolt situations to warn you that there is actually a serious fault and you should switch off the device. Uh, we've also got a JST connector over here. I mentioned earlier on about the Medusa. This guy can also connect to the Medusa and it can give you more information as well as all of this on a screen in an easier to read format. So you could get even more data if you wanted to. Um, so, however, as you can see, this again is a lot of information about the health and status and power status of the laptop on a bunch of LEDs just from plugging this in without even getting my multimeter out. I haven't even turned the multimeter on and I have all of this information without so much as a glance at the laptop. So again, the idea is it speeds up diagnostics and it can help you discover things much quicker. So again, if you've got a laptop that has come in because it doesn't seem to charge a battery and a replacement battery didn't seem to do the job, you can plug this in and it's immediately going to tell you if there's a problem with the motherboard's communication to the battery. And in terms of the laptop's ability to be powered by a battery, uh, I've got a DC jack here that's connected to my bench power supply at 8 volts. So what I'll do is I'll plug this into the side here. And now as you can see, or you can't because my studio lights are too bright, 
um, the known good battery has powered up and is now running from the bench power supply. So this means that now my bench power supply can give me power readings from this laptop so I can see how much power it's drawing and so on and so forth. And you can see that our charge LEDs have come on to indicate that the um, uh, laptop is receiving power from this. And you notice that intermittently it said SMC running there to indicate that the SMC had woken up. And now if I just open the laptop up and just press the power button, you can see that the fan has started spinning and we are now powering the laptop through the known good battery. So now I can actually see live readings on my DC bench power supply uh, as it's actually powering the laptop. And my power supply is now pretending to be a battery to the laptop. So let's talk about pricing and availability. CMI Zapper is based out of the Netherlands. However, they do ship worldwide. So you can buy these wherever you want and they will be shipped to you. Um, they do have a couple of distributors as well. So you're not necessarily going to be waiting for the earth depending on where you're buying from. Uh, check out their website for more information about that. will be linked in all down below in the description. So starting with the, uh, the Chipmunk. Uh, the Chipmunk, the Type A version clocks in at 50 euros and the Type C version clocks in at 60 euros. However, this guy is available with discounts if you buy two or four of them as well. So you can save a bit of money if you want a couple of these for a workshop. And I don't think that that is a steal as such, but keep in mind that these are what I would define as niche boutique tools. These are not cheap Chinese widgets that you can find on AliExpress. Uh, these are very much uh, designed with care and attention, and they are made with expensive stuff as well. Um, they've got nice LEDs on them. They're built with nice circuit board stuff. Again, you know, um, they're designed to be convenient, not built cheap. So do keep that in mind with the price. But if you are working on a lot of no-post laptops all the time, it's not a huge price to pay for how quickly it can give you information. And again, I've paid this kind of price for small widgets that don't seem to do much but are invaluable when you actually own them. Uh, I have a couple of other um, testers and gadgets kicking around which I paid a similar kind of price for. And at the time I was like, oh, this is kind of expensive for what it is, but I use them every day. And if you use them every day, suddenly that price is not really much at all when you think about it. So do keep that in mind. Um, so then the uh, the ROM chip solder board, uh, this guy clocks in at 20 euros. Uh, there are lots of discounts for buying these in multiples as well. For example, you get two of them, then um, you get two of them for 30 euros. So you can save money by buying a couple of these as well. Again, if you're in a workshop environment and you want to have a couple of them on the go. And again, fundamentally, it's 20 euros for a bit of circuit board. But uh, I sure as hell have not seen an adapter as nice as this one anywhere. Um, the cheap Chinese ones, they may only cost you a couple of quid instead of 20 euros. However, again, they're not nearly as nice as these. They don't have these footprints. Some of these footprints are very, very specialist um, and will be difficult to find. Uh, and having them all on this nice board with the extra connectors as well, which can be very useful. Again, like that right protect can be extremely valuable in certain circumstances when you need to tiptoe around your work. Um, again, really nicely presented product for a niche boutique tool, 20 euros. If you're buying it in a set of tools, it's not a huge extra just to add one of those in your cart. And then finally, uh, we've got the known good battery. Um, now, this guy, I think, actually clocks in to be extremely good value for money. Uh, so this comes in at 85 euros without a connector on it. So you get just the board. Now, if you've got any old batteries for a MacBook, which if you're working in a workshop where you would need one of these, you're going to have old batteries lying around. You can just chop the connector off of an old battery and put it on yourself. So for 85 euros, you can get yourself one of these. And that I think is actually incredibly good value for money because that's basically how much you're going to pay for a decent brand battery. Um, so if you're going to have a known good battery in your shop for testing with, you may as well have one that can give you all of this information as well. So that's the thing is that this guy I think is actually excellent value for money given that a, battery, a decent battery that is trustworthy as a test battery is going to cost you approximately the same amount. 
Only the difference is this guy isn't going to get blown up if you have if you plug it into a laptop that's got a shorted charge MOSFET. So that's worth keeping in mind. So as I say, uh, these are niche boutique tools. They are not especially cheap. However, given what they are, how they're designed, and who makes them, I think they're very, very good bang for buck. There are lots of useful resources about these tools on the CMI Zapper website. And if you are in the business of fixing Apple laptops, I think these are well worth having. Uh, and if you just fix laptops in general and uh, you've got a little bit of money to spend on some widgets, I think picking up one or a couple of these chipmunks is well worth it as well. They can be very handy. Anyone who fixes laptops for a living will know that sometimes it is surprisingly difficult to know is this laptop actually on or not? So past that, uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you very much to CMI Zapper for sending these in for me to have a look at. They're really handy. I've already been using these guys before. I haven't, I've resisted the urge to use this because I wanted to keep it nice and shiny and clean for the video. Uh, this guy I've also just used in a laptop that was not charging a battery properly. And again, it gave me all the information I needed to know, which was, is there a problem with the logic board or do I just have a bad battery or not? Very, very handy indeed. So thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.